Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, and today I'm going to talk about a subject that you all probably dread meetings. <laughs> Love them or hate them, there's just no avoiding the fact that they are part of our daily work life. And I think we've all at some point walked into a meeting room only to find that somebody has taken the HDMI cable home or or the adapter has gone missing or the AV system or projector doesn't work. Then we have the problem of one person presenting or an environment where the loudest voice in the room quickly drowns out everybody else. But if we also throw in hybrid working, back-to-back Zoom or Teams calls, and people trying to have a conversation in a mixture of different environments, fatigue can quickly set in. But it doesn't need to be this way. There are other ways of doing it. The reason I wanted to talk about this today was I recently came across a hybrid work survey from Barco talking about how businesses must now address the challenge of meeting equity in the hybrid environment. And by that, I mean meeting equity that ensures that remote employees receive that same level of engagement and collaboration and access to a meeting room experience as those that are physically seated around the table. So today I invited Anthony Wright from Barco to come on the podcast and try and make sense of this global problem that we all have experienced and how technology might be the solution to this problem. So buckle up and hold on tight, because wherever you're listening in the world, I'm about to beam your ears all the way to the UK, where you can join me and Anthony in conversation now. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure, no problem at all, Neil. Uh, My name's uh, Anthony Wright. I'm Sales Director at Barco for the collaboration uh, side of the business, and I manage the UK and Nordics. Um, My role involves uh, defining, obviously, uh, the strategy for Barco within these territories, as well as managing a team of people which uh, offers a true end-to-end approach where we look after the distributors and resellers, plus also engage directly with the end customers and consultants. So uh, that's my role. Fantastic. And I always like to find out a little bit more about my guests. So my first question has got to be, where did your passion for tech come from? How did you get here? What's your origin story ultimately? Okay, so that's a very, very good question. Um, So if I could start off with my origin story. So... Uh, I'm not going to go back to my deep, deepest, darkest history of, you know, sort of being brought up in in Herefordshire in the countryside. But uh, I effectively graduated from university with an honours degree in environmental management. Mm -hmm. And um, I came out expecting to uh, walk into a job straight away. Um, However, there was a distinct lack of opportunities in that particular field. So I decided to join a small IT company. And I quickly realized that uh, technology provided me with a great opportunity um, because it was constantly evolving and developing and it's allowed my career to progress. Um, So within my career, I've started up an internet service provider and I've worked for a number of vendors um, and and manufacturers. So yeah, it's it's been a really, really good ride in the IT industry. As regard my passion for technology, well, um, I wouldn't say that I'm I'm passionate about tech. Um, you know, certainly from the point of view, I'm not a geek that wants to know everything and yeah. how everything works. But what I would say is technology really does excite me uh, about how it can impact people's lives for the better. I sort of look back at the start of my IT career and see how, you know, sort of technology has evolved in such a short period of time. And I find it truly amazing. So you look back at maybe the 70s, so I'm slightly showing my age now, but uh, when the first mobile phones came out, they had batteries which were the size of a breeze block, um, you know, but now today you can look at a smartphone that can fit in your pocket and has the processing capabilities of a large computer. 
And that type of thing amazes me to see how technology has transformed people's lives. So that's that's a little bit of a, an overview of what gives me a bit of passion about technology. Yeah, you and me both. And I love that journey we've been on and seeing it evolve uh, over the years. And, and for yourself, that path actually led you to Barco. And I'm conscious there will be people listening, hearing about Barco for the first time. So can you just offer a, a bit of an overview on it and the kind of problems that you solve for businesses? Basically, the journey started about six years ago when I joined Barco. And this was primarily down to ClickShare. Um, Now, this product was a truly innovative product at the time, um, and it was one of the main catalysts uh, to improve collaboration within the meeting room. So the Generation 1 click share enabled um, sharing of content to be done wirelessly and removed the need for cables on the desk. Now, sure, we've all been there and been confronted with that bird's nest of cables and not knowing which, you know, sort of connection you need to plug in, etc., So ClickShare really met a need within that um, meeting environment. In addition to that, ClickShare also um, transformed the meeting room because uh, primarily what we see or used to see in a meeting room was one person had the cable, they plugged it into their laptop and they drove the entire meeting. With ClickShare, what it allowed you to do was actually share multiple sources of content on screen So all of the participants within the meeting room were able to have their own opinions, share content and share information. So it gave a very, very inclusive and dynamic way of sharing information in the meeting room. So recently, we've just uh, brought in ClickShare Conference to our range. Um, Now, this product is is also addressing problems that we see today. And that's the uh, brought about by the rise of video conferencing that we're seeing in the office uh, environment, mainly due to obviously the pandemic. So what we're seeing is many companies have had to adopt platforms like Teams, Zoom or WebEx. And what we find is um, employers and employees want to go into the meeting room and be able to start a conference call very, very quickly and easily Um, at the touch of a button or the click of an app. Now, ClickShare Conference allows you to do this uh, through the ability to be able to uh, click on your Teams link or your WebEx link, and then the ClickShare will take over all of the devices within the meeting room, so your camera and your audio bars, et cetera, and allows that in-room experience to be given to the participants, whether or not they're in the meeting room or remote. So that way, you get a more inclusive um, environment for conference calls. It's incredibly cool. I was getting flashbacks for my IT pass there on both sides of the fence from being the, the uh, IT guy in the early days to going into that crowded boardroom with about 30 people sat around the table and no one being able to get the AV system and the, the <laughs> everything connected on there, which was stressful on its own, but equally being on the other side and, and inside a meeting. And it was always, as you said, it's the loudest voice in the room, the person with the computer just speaking to everyone. But now everything's changed now and it's all about collaboration, which is obviously a great thing and, and not just people in the meeting room, but working remotely. It's, it's a huge step forward, isn't it? For, for the right reasons. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that that, this is what, you know, sort of people are looking for as well. So people are really looking for, you know, that voice to feel included, feel feel that their opinions are, you know, sort of worthwhile. So I think ClickShare has brought, you know, sort of this um, to the market. And as I say, ClickShare Conference is a fantastic product now to address this conferencing era that we all find ourselves in. Absolutely. And the big trend at the moment, of course, is hybrid working. I mentioned it a few moments ago. Some people are going to be in the meeting room. Some people are going to be working at home, but they're all seamlessly collaborating. And you guys recently released the ClickShare Hybrid Work Survey, and and that showed businesses must address these new challenges of meeting equity in the hybrid environment. But can you tell me a little bit more about that survey, who you spoke to and, and the kind of things that you found there? Yeah, definitely. So the hybrid work survey was a global survey that we carried out uh, by Barco. Mm. And we interviewed up to four, well, it was 4,000 white collar workers. um, And it was all about, you know, sort of their experience within the hybrid way of working and what they, you know, felt um, and trying to obviously obtain some definitive insights 
into you know sort of what was going on in this new world uh, that we're, we're all finding ourselves in. The overarching feedback that we obtained from the survey was that 80% of the audience that was um, surveyed actually preferred a hybrid way of working um, with many people preferring a three day in the office and two day working from home. However, the survey also identified that 60% of businesses don't actually have a hybrid work policy in place. Um, with few having invested in equipment uh, for their workforce uh, to have the right tools to enable successful hybrid working. So it was quite interesting when we went in depth um, to this hybrid survey to actually really sort of um, dig down into what was taking place out there on a global basis uh, within the meeting room um, and meeting room equity. And I'm curious, when you received a copy of that report, were there any key stats that just bounced out for you and and really stood out? Oh, absolutely. But there's probably too many for me to go through all of them. However, there is a, you know, sort of link that we'll talk about later um, where, you know, people can go and see that survey. But the key stats that really stood out for me were, you know, obviously after two years of COVID, um, Barco created a what we call a meeting barometer Mm -hmm. where we actually reviewed the past years and the key thing that um, really really stood out here was back in 2019 actually the satisfaction score that we saw within the meeting room barometer of you know how people felt you know sort of during meetings was really really positive at a plus 63 percent Um, However, this changed, you know, in 2020, where we started to see a slight dip, Mm. where it went to plus 17. But in 2021, it went to minus 25%. And in 2022, went to a staggering 38, um, staggering minus 38%. Now, the main reason behind this that we actually found was that Though people want more hybrid meetings, they were actually finding the number of hybrid meetings that they were having to participate in was getting so many that actually they were becoming slightly disengaged, quite disillusioned with it. And they were also finding the hybrid meeting, you know, sort of being quite difficult to um, feel part of. Another big stat that really jumped out at me was that 71% of the people surveyed said that actually experienced um, stress during a hybrid meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, mainly the stress that we saw was actually down to um, more technical and emotional and functional levels. So, you know, things such as going into the meeting room and not being able to start the meeting quickly, having problems with the technology, not feeling as a remote participant that they were actually being listened to or heard. So it was that type of, um, you know, sort of element that we were picking out of of this survey. And then another interesting stat was seven in 10 people also said that they experienced emotional frustration. Um, And again, this was down to people not having correct, you know, sort of hybrid policies in place. So I think this really demonstrates that if you don't equip your employees with the right tools, the right environments um, to participate in hybrid meetings, it can actually have a really negative effect. Wow, man. Zoom fatigue is most certainly real, judging by those (laughs) results. uh, But the results do suggest that businesses just need to address the challenge of meeting equity in a hybrid environment. But the big question I've got to ask you, and I apologise because it is a pretty big one, but... Can you offer any pointers on on how they can do just that? That is a big question, Neil. However, yeah. you know, I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> so I, th- I, th- I think the first thing, going back to what I was saying previously, actually companies need to implement a hybrid working policy. Yeah. Um, and what they need to think about is that the in-room um, experience should be the same for the remote user as well. And and I think this is something that we fail to address uh, particularly well. I think through having a hybrid policy, it will ensure inclusion uh, for the employees and they will feel like they're heard and they have a voice. So little simple things that you can do is, you know, if you're hosting a meeting with external participants or remote participants, is actually going to them as part of your policy asking their opinions, asking them to share information and content, et cetera, 
into the call because again this will actually um you know sort of make a more inclusive environment i think it's far far too easy if you're a remote participant to be forgotten and left in the background um so i think you know bringing this into your your policies is really really important i think also ensuring that the workplace is engaging and it's somewhere where employees want to come to be able to work from and encourage them to collaborate. Um, and this can be with simple things such as improving your workplace design. So we see a lot of people now putting quite funky furniture into their offices, um, maybe more of a cafe, you know, sort of way of working, etc. But again, attract the people in um, to, to, to the offices. Um, also enable your uh, workplace with the right technology. Um, and this is so important because it's all well and good having the environment, but if the technology is not there and it's not technology that is intuitive and easy to use with a simple user experience, then it won't actually um, make the hybrid meeting simple um, and easy. I think if the technology is too complicated, it will not get used or worse still, it will actually have a negative impact um, on the experience that people have. And then the final thing that I would say is try and overcome barriers as well um, for your employees. So ensure that they're trained. How often do we see it whereby, you know, sort of a company will implement new technology into an environment and all of a sudden you're just told to go and use it? Mm. You actually don't get any training. Um, I think we all experienced that when we moved into this virtual world. Nobody really had any training on Teams, Zoom, et cetera. We had to learn it ourselves. So help people um, along this journey to use the technology and the meeting spaces correctly. And as someone that's working right in the heart of this space, I imagine you've seen and heard it all. So I'm curious, did, did anything in the survey surprise you? Any, any trends or tech trends that you noticed? The, the key points that surprised me was actually we've got a little bit of a paradox uh, yeah. which is taking place because 80% of the people that we interviewed actually said that they preferred working in a hybrid way. However, um, we actually found out that 71% of all people surveyed actually found the hybrid meeting stressful. Yeah. So we, we, we had a, a bit of a paradox um, which took place. We also saw that 73% of employees considered switching jobs to an organization that had a defined hybrid work policy, with many individuals not being prepared to be in the office full time. Um, so I think this sort of goes back to what we and most probably all become accustomed to, that people want a hybrid way of working because I think that it generates a better work-life balance for many. However, going back to what I was talking to earlier, um, was it's about making sure that the spaces and the equipment works so we can actually minimise the amount of stress that people are under during these hybrid uh, working environments. Another point that jumped out was 77% of the employees want meeting spaces to be equipped with conferencing equipment. So they really do want to embrace it. However, they also said that the, the equipment needs to be very, very simple and straightforward to use with 78% of people saying that they just wanted to walk in and be able to connect within seconds, okay, to the technology and start their, you know, meeting straight away. Um, so I think that those were, you know, some of the key stats that, you know, sort of jumped out to me um, on it. Um, and I think the other thing that, that, that we also saw that the study showed that there's a staggering 71% of employees wanted to use their laptops as their main method of connecting um, for conferencing. Um, and I think the main reason behind this that, that, that we saw was it was very familiar to them. They felt comfortable with the technology so they they wanted to you know sort of have that comfort blanket i suppose of being able to start their meetings from their own devices rather than using maybe more of an in-room type device 
And another big trend we must talk about, of course, is the Great Resignation. It's continued to impact corporate America, and it's a trend that's spread all over the world. And it's becoming increasingly obvious that it's imperative for employers to understand how to best implement these long-term hybrid working strategies that can guard against the loss of top talent, especially when there is such a, a huge tech skill shortage going on at the moment. So the risks for not doing so are very real and very significant. But I'm curious, from the conversations that you're having with business leaders, are they understanding this message? Is it something that they're receiving loud and clear, or, or are you still having battles in delivering that message? I think that's a great question, Neil. And yes, I definitely feel that we're starting to see business leaders realise um, that they need to um, change. Um, however, for many of them, there is still a long way to go. There's definitely been a realisation that the office now needs to attract the employee back, with many companies now investing heavily in office redesign and refurbishment to make the office a place that employees want to seek out. I think also catering for better collaboration means that they need to make the investment in the technology and improve a work from, uh, work from anywhere culture. And this will make the employee feel more valued and it will empower um, the employee, plus it enables to, them to maintain a much better work-life balance. But I think if they, if the em, employer does this correctly, it also really injects a lot more creativity, innovation into their businesses, which will only help them in the future. Fantastic. And we've talked a lot today about a lot of the challenges in the industry, but also with a positive note on how to overcome those challenges. And they will all resonate with people listening wherever they are in the world. So I'm I'm curious, though, what makes you hopeful about the future? Is there anything that particularly excites you about where we're heading and, and the role that your technology will play, too? We, we've all got to be realistic that employees are not going to accept the same way in which they were two or three years ago. And I think the future for you know, employees will be that they will have to adapt in order to get talent to come into the office and, and work within their you know, sort of businesses. So we're starting to see that real step change taking place in many of the large corporates at the moment as they embrace more of a hybrid way of working and implement hybrid policies. I think the companies that have adopted the new hybrid way of working are also seeing some real benefits from it, as they're actually seeing a much happier workforce with improvements in productivity and reduced operating costs. Plus, it's also a more sustainable way as they cut down on their travel. Um, and, you know, that can only be beneficial for all of us as, you know, sort of uh, we see reductions in, you know, sort of carbon footprints, et cetera. I think, you know, as I detailed at the start of this interview, um, the key thing that really excites me about, you know, our technology is the fact that through implementing technology like ClickShare Conference into companies, um, employees are actually reaping the benefits in a better, you know, sort of um, work-life balance because they're not having to come into the office as often. Um, plus, in addition to that, we're also starting to see, you know, sort of, far more uh, inclusive meetings taking place as, you know, sort of people that use ClickShare Conference and ClickShare are able to share content, you know, sort of in the meetings. They have a voice. They feel included. So I really do think that, you know, this, you know, really shows how ClickShare is, is driving this change within the meeting room. I think the other key point that um, ClickShare has shown to us has been down to the fact that, you know, when people are selecting a technology, it's imperative that it's got to be easy to use. And I think that that's where ClickShare really does, you know, sort of um, drive that whole simplicity element as you can join your conference call from any one of your platforms at the click of a button or the touch of an app. So I think that this is where, you know, we are actually seeing products like ClickShare driving the, the, the change within the meeting room. Because as I said, if you get your technology wrong, it can actually have a detrimental effect. So making sure you select the right technology should be the key thing that all companies are looking at, you know, for their future hybrid working policies. 
Well, I suspect that everybody listening to this podcast has experienced too many back-to-back meetings. I've experienced bad <laughs> tech inside a meeting room and equally bad tech when working from home. So I, I love how we've talked about these problems today, but also how to overcome them with technology. So thank you for that. But we're now at the fun part of the show. I'm going to put a bit of pressure on you now and ask you to Ooh. leave the listeners with a personal touch of inspiration by sharing maybe a book that has inspired you or maybe just a go-to song that you need to get your head in the zone or a song that's important to you what are you going to leave us with today i I chose a book you know sort of which my wife bought me and the book's actually called if i could tell you just one thing um actually written by richard reed and the reason why i selected that book was it actually gives you advice from a number of very very inspirational people and it's got very very short passages in it so it's not a really heavy read But what it allows you to do is just reflect on, you know, some advice that these people are giving you. Um, And I think for me, it was great when I read it because it was very insightful because I think in today's modern world, you can get caught up in the day to day, um, you know, rat race, I suppose. And actually, you can forget some of the simple things. And this was something which I really felt, you know, sort of resonated with me. And it was the type of thing you could, you know, grab it for 10 minutes in the evening before you went to bed. And, you know, it really did, you know, sort of help when I went into the office, when I went into the meeting and when I was meeting with colleagues, you know, just thinking of that, those little tips and tricks and advice that these people. So definitely a good read and um, I'd recommend it to anyone. Awesome. Well, I'll get that added to our Amazon wish list. And before I let you go, for anyone listening, just want to find out more information about Barco or the survey that we've been talking about throughout this episode or contact your team, what's the best starting point? So I think first first starting point would be uh, to visit the Barco website. So if you go www.barco.com forward slash clickshare, you'll find obviously all of the product information on there. You'll find a range of assets and videos so there's some nice things on there which show you within 30 seconds exactly how ClickShare works and stuff like that. Um, in addition to that, um, if you're at all interested in taking this technology and trialing this technology, then we do what we call a try and buy. So there's no obligations for people. They can just basically go onto the Barco website, register for a trial unit, and they get a 30-day free trial um, of our product. And we're that confident that the product will actually change their, you know, sort of meeting behaviors, et cetera, that, um, you know, our success rate of actually selling the products after people have taken the trial is very, very high. Um, So those are most probably your best places to go um, from a Barco perspective. Um, But if you do need anything, then I'm happy to, you know, sort of share my details as well um, after or, or on this blog. Awesome. Well, I'll have those links to the show notes. And I do urge people to check out Barco's ClickShare hybrid work survey. It really does show and uh, highlight how businesses must address the challenge of meeting equity in the hybrid environment. It's such a big topic at the moment. It deserves everybody's attention. And I think everything that we've talked about today will resonate with people all over the world. We all have those experience with meetings, but it doesn't have to be that way. So thank you so much for sharing that, along with your great story and leaving us with a cracking book too. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. There were so many big insights in that ClickShare hybrid work survey, such as 35% of participants still have trouble fully engaging during virtual meetings, 28% finding it difficult to have their voices heard when joining a hybrid meeting remotely, and 30% are open to joining a company with a more clearly defined hybrid work policy. And finally, 80% of workers actually prefer hybrid working models. No surprises there. But only 60% of businesses have these policies in place. And it does make me wonder what will happen to those organisations that insist that everybody must be in the office five days a week the exact same way before the pandemic. What's going to happen when people start moving to other organisations and maybe even competitors that are offering more flexible working? Well, Let's say you go in the office three days a week and have two days working from home. Food for thought, but how are you and your organisation managing this problem it's something that no matter where you're listening in the 165 countries that i know you're all listening no matter where it is i know you're all trying to overcome the same challenges 
So what are you doing? What is working? What is not working? For example, I've recently spoke to a company where they insist everybody goes in the office Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. So everybody can be in the office at the same time and enjoy those moments of serendipity where you can bounce ideas around. But everybody works from home or has the opportunity to work from home on a Monday or Friday. Is that a model that could work? What works for you? What doesn't? I'd love to hear all your ideas. Send them over to me and we can share them on here. And maybe together we can help solve this problem. And my email address is simply techblogwriteroutlook.com. Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, at Neil C. Hughes. And you can also pop by my website, techblogwriter.co.uk. Really interested in what you all have to say on this and on both sides of the coin as well. Maybe you completely disagree with everything we've talked about, and I'd love to hear that side. But I'll return again tomorrow with another guest and another topic to get you all thinking. But a big thank you for listening as always today. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.